inviting us into your worship. I want to take the time also this morning and thank our chairman, Deacon, Deacon Reggie Bethea, for leading us in prayer. Uh, for those of you that are watching for the first time, I am H. Patrick Kaysen, the senior pastor of the Bethany Baptist Church, 2587 Campo Stella Road in the beautiful city of Chesapeake, where we declare and decree that we are real people serving a real God. Good morning to each and every one of you. Thank you for tuning in live this morning for this worship experience. Uh, we are excited uh, to continue in our series entitled Big. B-I-G, believe in God. And it's my hope through this series that we will have our faith strengthened, that we will go beyond what we see, what we feel, and what we think to truly believe in God. I am a firm believer that God does his best work in some of our most inopportune moments, uh, that the the adversaries and adversities that we face uh, in life uh, gives God ample opportunity to show how mighty and how strong he is. And so we hope that this series uh, blesses you. We want to take the time to thank our virtual team that's here in place. I want to take the time to thank our band that's in place. I want to remind you, those that are watching live, please do not forget that this is Second Sunday. And each and every Second Sunday, we have our drive through communions. The deacons and I will be here uh, until about 1215 today. Uh, 1215 today. Please, please, from 11 a.m. to 1215 today, we will be distributing uh, drive through communion. All you got to do, security will be here. They will direct you. Just follow the direction of security. Come on in and we'd love to see your beautiful faces uh, in the place as we distribute uh, communion to you on this second Sunday. Would you bow with me? for a word of prayer. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. God, we invite you now to come into this moment of sharing even the more. I pray, God, that you use me as a pipeline to flow what you have given me to the hearts and the minds of those that are listening and watching this morning. It is my prayer, God, that you would hide me behind thy old rugged cross, turpentine my tongue that I may speak truth to power, and power to your people that they would not hear Cason today but we would hear from the cross that we would see Jesus have thine own way in Jesus name amen so in this second series in this second series second part of this series called big big believe in god on last week i think we did think big uh, this week, we're going to talk about seeing big, seeing, seeing big. If you would join me in the gospel according to Mark, Mark's gospel, the Markian gospel, uh, the eighth chapter, verses 22 through 26, 22 through 26. Um, very familiar text for those of you that are familiar with the Markian gospel. Uh, my Bible reads like this. They came to Bethsaida. And some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. When he had spit on the man's eyes and put his hands on him, Jesus asked the question, do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. One more, once more, Jesus put his hands on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were opened. His sight was restored, and he saw everything 
clearly. Jesus sent him home saying, don't even go into the village. I want to wrestle with you from topic this morning, seeing big, seeing big. My brothers and sisters, it's imperative that not only we see God, but we see how big God is. Bible informs us that his strength is made perfect in our times of weakness. That in those weak moments, in the moments when it seems as though we cannot find or figure our way out, it's the moment that God wants to take the opportunity to expose how big God is. Last week, I had an opportunity to share with you when David was faced with a Goliath that in the times where our adversary and our adversities are the largest, it's a great opportunity for God to prove how big he is. Now, let, let, me, let me explain this to you. When we think about how big God is, we cannot allow what we don't see to limit our belief in what God can do. Bible says that faith is a substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, and without it, it's impossible to please God. Faith moves God, and God will allow us to be in certain situations where we can't see God in order for God to reveal himself to us. All right, that, that, that might have been a little deep for your morning croissant uh, this morning, but let, let me help you. It's in the times where we can't sense or see God that we still have to see God. It's in the times where we can't feel God that we have to trust what the Bible says that he'll never leave us nor forsake us. And oftentimes, just because you can't sense or see God does not mean that God is not present and still yet powerful. See, see, when we have to have to tangibly see something, it can cause for the illusion or should I say disillusion that we can be safe in what we see. But as believers in God, our sanctity and safety does not come in what we see or sense. It's what we know. It's our experience with God that allows us to see God when we can't see God. Here it is in the text. Jesus is preparing to heal a blind man. Bible says they came to Bethsaida. Some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him. Now watch this. It says, Jesus took the blind man by the hand and led him outside the village. Jesus took the man from the people that brought the man to him away from them to do what it is that he was getting ready to do. So the blind man had to have a level of security in a stranger as he's led to the outside of the village. One of the things, Deacon Bethay, that I see in the text this morning that if we're going uh, to, to be seeing big, it lets me know that sometimes seeing big requires separation. Uh, that, that, that what God is preparing to do in your life isn't 
for everyone to see. Or should I say the process is not for everyone to see. And so seeing big requires separation because it won't make sense to somebody. God help me preach, Patrick Kaysen. Seeing big requires separation because to the right people, it just won't make sense. And sometimes the voice of others have more influence than the voice of God in our life. And so God will require a stay of separation away from the people that got you to the place where you can get the help that you need. Y'all ain't gonna help me because the villagers are not described, James, as friends. The villagers are just described as some people. And let me help you. I believe with my sanctified imagination that that these people wanted to see a miracle more than they wanted this man to get his sight they're now turning Jesus into a carnival act a circus act by trade or by chance because they want to see Rocky pull a rabbit out of his hat more than they really want to see this man who cannot see get some help so Jesus requires a separation because everybody around you ain't necessarily for for you requires seeing big requires separation because the process may not be what everybody thinks it should be you know it's amazing to me that everybody always have has a level of commentary on the stuff that you're going through nobody it, it's it's a rarity andre that that, that people say, well, maybe this is God's doing. <laughs> they they want to tell you how to get out of it when God is the one that lets you get in it. And if you get out of it too soon, you won't get what you need so that you can go to the next level, Tron. And so you got to stay sometimes uh, in the struggle. And so God will require a level of separation uh, so that he can do what he's trying to do in you. Because everybody around you, although some may mean you're good, everybody ain't for you. Requires some separation. And separation, <laughs> this ain't in my notes, but God dropped it in my, my, my spirit. Separation will lead to a sanctification of solitude. Where you get all by yourself and it's just you and God. You see, he started off on a journey with some, with some people in the village. It doesn't even describe it. It just says some people brought a blind man. The man's not named. The people aren't named and begged Jesus to touch him. He took the blind man by the hand and led him outside of the village. Now, Jesus being sovereign and Jesus being omniscient, being, being the deity, meaning God and humanity wrapped in flesh in one, him being Emmanuel, he already understood the motives of the people that brought the blind man to him. And because their motives and their heart were not pure, he caused a level of separation, what gave them a level of sanctification uh, in a very solemn place. Being by, I said all that to say, let me help you. Being by yourself can help you see better. Being by yourself can help you see God better. So Jesus takes the man by the hand and leads him outside of the village. Watch this. When he had spit on the man's eyes, and put his hands on him, Jesus asked, do you see anything? Number one, seeing big requires separation, but the second thing seeing big requires sometimes is some unseemly solutions. You see, Jesus doesn't spit in the dirt like in other stories. He spits in the man's face. Unseeming meaning rude or uh, unhumane behavior. And maybe that's why the separation was required because what Jesus was about to do, everybody wouldn't understand. God help me. 
You've been wrestling why you had to get away from it all, Trey, but part of the reason you had to get away was because what Jesus was getting ready to do, everybody else wasn't going to understand. Uh, you, you, you had to get in a situation where there was a level of desperation uh, and a need for sanctification. Uh, and so you were solely and solemnly placed uh, in this place because what Jesus uh, is trying to do in your life, uh, everybody's not going to understand. Seeing big requires some unseemly solutions. That sometimes the solution is not as plain as everybody thinks it is. Okay, this just jumped to me in the text and I got excited, Tim. Bible says that the people brought the blind man to Jesus and said, touch him. But Jesus understood that the solution required a little more than they could understand and comprehend. So he had to have a level of separation because he knew I can't just touch him, but in this one, I got to spit on him. Golly, Jesus separates him. Because what's required in this season is more than they can comprehend. some unseemly solutions and I want to talk to somebody today that's walking alone and feel misunderstood and let you know that it is all right <laughs> there are so many people that will never understand your process all you need to be concerned with is trying to see don't be consumed with what they see and what they say how they think that things should go. All you need to be concerned with in this season is trying to see. Now, some of us will miss our miracle because of the unseemly solution. <laughs> I, I, I want to see, but I don't want to be spit on. <laughs> God help me. Uh, I, 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 want, I, I, want, I want these resolves without this process. You cannot get <laughs> my resolutions without my process. I hear people all the time, preachers say it all the time, man, doc, I wish I had your hand. You ever heard somebody say that? That's a little catchphrase. I wish I had your hand. If you had my hand, you'd probably cut them off. Because you can't have my hand without my process. My process is what made me where I am today. It was the sum total, Tron, of all of my experiences that brought me to this place uh, and space. And so you want to see, but you don't want to be blind. You want to see, but you don't want to be spit on. Uh, you want to see, but you don't want separation. Uh, well, baby, I came to tell you that it's a part that you play uh, in the miracle that God is trying to do in your life. The blind man could have resisted and said, no, I don't know him. He's a stranger. The blind man could have resisted uh, and, and wiped the spit off of his face but, but if you really want to see you got to see big seeing big requires separation seeing big requires unseemly solutions watch this Jesus asked a question uh, and I love it when Jesus asks a question because Jesus asks questions that Jesus already knows the answer to so ultimately, him asking you a question is not about him wanting the answer from you. He wants you to process so that you can get to where you're going through. Look what it says. Do you see anything? He looked up and said, I see people. They look like trees walking around. Here's my shout cue. Um, first of all, it's difficult for me to see people when I've been separated. Looking like trees walking around. Seeing big will give you a sense 
of restoration. So now I have hope that what I'm coming out of is greater than what I'm in. Here's, here's, what, I, here's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, Wood, it says, once more he puts his hands on the man's eyes, then his eyes were open. Okay, stop. When Jesus asked him, do you see anything? He instantly responds. He looked up and said, I see people, they look like trees walking around. That was the hope. I was separated. I trusted a stranger. Uh, that was the hope. The hope was I would be able to see. That's the whole reason they bought me this man. I'd be able to see. Watch this. Says Jesus put his hands on his man's on the man's eyes. Then his eyes were open. Well, how did he really see the first time if his eyes weren't open? Help me. It was the hope of seeing that gave him a sense of restoration. And today, I came to help somebody today that if you don't lose anything else, I know you've lost a lot in the pandemic. You've lost loved ones. You've lost finances. You've lost friends. You've lost your mind in some sense. The one thing you can't afford to lose in this season is hope. You still have to hope no matter what it looks like or what it does not look like. You still have to have hope no matter what it feels like or what it doesn't feel like you still have to have hope no matter what you're going through or what you're coming out of the one thing you cannot lose child of God is your hope I'm done text says Jesus <laughs> puts his hands on the man's eyes once more uh, don't recall any other story in the Bible where Jesus does it twice. That's good all by itself. <laughs> that Jesus, if it ain't right the first time, is willing to do it again. God help me. <laughs> Jesus decides to do it again. And that's good news for somebody today, uh, that Jesus is willing, uh, if it ain't right, to do it again. There's a blessed assurance uh, that seeing big requires separation. Seeing big requires, at times, unseemly solutions. Seeing big will give you a sense of restoration. But seeing big also allows the Savior uh, to set it straight. <laughs> I came to let you know that God has not forgotten about you. <laughs> that even in the midst of what you're going through, God will see you through. <laughs> That if it takes a second chance or a third opportunity or a fourth inquiry or a fifth interaction to get you where you need to be, God will, he'll do it for you. Uh, I want to let somebody know today uh, that you've got to see it big, uh, bigger than what you're going through, uh, bigger than what you're feeling, uh, bigger than what they're saying. Uh, is there anybody here this morning uh, that's logged in live uh, or that's watching on television uh, that said pastor I needed this today uh, because life has uh, brought me down uh, but now I know uh, that if I just trust in the Lord uh, he will uh, see me through uh, is there anybody uh, in this place this morning uh, that's excited to say uh, I'm so glad uh, that God God will do it again. I'm so glad that last time wasn't the last time. But oh, he'll touch me again if it ain't set straight. God knows how to fix it. God knows how to turn it around. God knows how to set it straight. You ought to get on your telephone. Matter of fact, go ahead and send 
send some thumbs up uh, and some heart emojis uh, and text somebody uh, and say, God will uh, give me a second chance. Uh, is there anybody uh, that's so glad uh, this morning uh, that I'm seeing big, uh, that my future's so big, uh, my calling is so big, uh, that I believe uh, what the Bible says, uh, that eyes haven't seen, uh, ears haven't heard, uh, neither has it entered into uh, the hearts of men, uh, the great things uh, that the Lord uh, has in store for you. Uh, good morning, y'all. Uh, may the Lord God bless you. Uh, real, real, real good. Uh, but I'll stop by here uh, on my way to heaven uh, just to encourage uh, your heart uh, and let you know uh, that greater is he uh, that's within me. Uh, and so as I uh, as I journey uh, through the land, uh, singing as I go, uh, I want to let you know uh, that I'm not just seeing uh, through these glasses, uh, but there are uh, some rose-colored glasses uh, that I view life through. Uh, what do you mean, uh, rose-colored glasses? Uh, well, let me tell you uh, how my glasses got uh, tinted in rose, uh, that there is uh, a fountain uh, filled, uh, filled, uh, filled with blood uh, that flows uh, from Emmanuel's veins uh, and sinners' blood uh, beneath that flow. Uh, loose her, uh, the gypsy stays. Uh, I look through uh, some rose colored glasses. Uh, why do you say that, Casey? Uh, because the blood. Uh, still reaches uh, to the highest mountain uh, it still flows uh, to the lowest valley uh, rose colored glasses uh, give me strength uh, from day to day uh, has the Lord been good uh, has he made ways has the Lord been good uh, has he opened doors uh, why don't you help me uh, preach in this place uh, if the Lord uh, been good to you uh, grab your neighbor uh, by the hand uh, squeeze that hand uh, and said neighbor uh, I'm seeing me uh, the devil tried uh, to cloud my vision uh, but I'm removing uh, satanic cataracts uh, I'm removing uh, satanic glaucoma and I can see uh, clearly now uh, shout yeah Shout yes, shout yes, shout yes. If you can see clearly, lift your head, open your mouth, open your eyes, and tell the Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm seeing big, bigger than what other people around me could really comprehend. My faith looks up to thee. And on today, I want to encourage you to stop viewing yourself where you are. See yourself where God has taken you. Now watch this. I heard a songwriter pin these words. You got to see it before you see it or you never will see it. As long as you see yourself in what you're in and going through, you will stay there. But when you learn how to see big, B-I-G, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not seeing based on my situation. I'm not seeing based on my power. I'm not seeing based on my authority. I'm seeing based on my belief in God.
The hardest thing about this position, this calling that I walk in, it's not the preaching. I've said it a thousand times. I'll say it again for those who, who've never heard me say it. The hardest part about being a pastor is wanting more for people than they want for themselves. That I can see the potential in you. And I'm talking not just the pastors this morning, not just the preachers, but I'm talking to parents. I'm talking to grandparents that you feel like your child or grandchild just does not get it. Listen, she be that the redemption of the Lord is not a process cookie cutter for everybody. But that's why I get excited when I say it still reaches to the highest mountain. It still flows to the lowest valley. That that hymn lets me know that no matter how far I fall, no matter how low I get, that God still reaches. And that's the way I got to see. That's the way you got to see. I pray that this helped you in some way, shape, or form today. As you go through your day to day, it will change. It will correct your perception, which will change your reality. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we love you. Father, we pray now. that you would touch our eyes again so that we would be able to see the way you've called for us to see. Seeing big requires us not to look back or to go back. Help us, God. We pray right now for someone that's not saved. We ask, oh God, that you would come into their hearts. Forgive them of their sins. We pray right now for somebody that's gone astray. We ask, God, that you would draw them back, creating them a clean heart. We ask now, God, that you would be with us for days to come. In Jesus' name, amen. I got so consumed in the message, I forgot to give you this last little piece. The end of the text says that Jesus sent him home, saying, don't go back to the village. Don't go back to whoever that's for this morning. Don't go back. Don't look back. Start seeing big. Second Sunday is our communion Sunday. We're getting ready to start our drive through communion outside at 11. But for those of you that can't make it out, I want you to go and get your communion elements right now. Go get your crackers. Go get your, your grape juice. Go get your, your bread. Go get your wine so that we can have communion together. It reaches to the highest, highest mountain. Oh, and it flows to the lowest valley. Oh, yeah. Oh, the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose its power. To the high, 
this mountain and it flows to the lowest valley oh yeah the blood that gives me strength from day to day, it will never lose, lose its power. And on that night, Jesus and his disciples gathered in the upper room. took the bread and said, this is my body, broken for the sins of the world. Break and eat. Likewise, he took the cup. This is my blood shed for the sins of the world. Drink ye all of it. And as often as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. The Bible declares that they sung a hymn and went out into the Mount of Olives. We no longer have a Mount of Olives, but we do have a dying world, a sick world, a world in pandemic that's in need of a Savior. Remember to take Jesus with you everywhere you go, because the Jesus within you may be the only Jesus that someone may come to know. Let us pray. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord make the Lord's face and countenance to shine upon you. And may the Lord give you peace. Peace to no longer worry or be weary. Peace that may cause for you to rest through the night. May the blessed God of peace, Jehovah Shalom, grant you God's peace. Jesus name amen hey I love you there's absolutely nothing you can do about it don't let anything or anybody disturb your joy don't let anything or anybody disturb your peace have a great day on purpose please stay tuned for an announcement to follow this broadcast and we will see you in the morning oh yeah the blood God bless you and thank you for worshiping with us through our virtual worship. We pray that something was said or done today in worship to help you along life's journey. Listen, we are so very appreciative for your unwavering support during these times. If you wish to continue to support the Bethany Baptist Church and its ministry, there are a couple of ways that you can do it. The first way that you can do it is through Givelify. All you have to do is go to your app store and you can download the Givelify app and look for this particular house of worship. The second way you can support this ministry is through sending your gifts via mail. All you have to do is mail your gifts to 2587 Campostella Road in the beautiful city of Chesapeake, 23324. Last but not least, you can support this ministry by dropping your gifts off here at the church. Our office hours are Monday through Thursday from 10 to 2, and you can even stop by doing our virtual worship experience from 9 o'clock to 12 noon. Someone will be here to receive your gifts. Listen, remember this. I love you, and there's absolutely nothing you can do about it. We pray that God blesses your day, and we'll see you in the morning.